Hello. Welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Craig Martin. Craig is a certified financial planner. His company is the Family Wealth Consulting Group. They are fee-only financial planners and provide asset management services. They've been doing that for over 30 years. Craig is the author of a book, Craig Martin on Asset Class Investing, and I'll bet if you got in touch with Craig, uh, you see his address, uh, contact information at the end of this show, he would love to send you an autographed copy. Be happy to. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Um, and so today, uh, we've been having people going through turbulent times. We just did a show about that. You might want to look at it on uh, our past episodes <clears throat> should be posted uh, uh, at our website, financialinsiderweekly.com. Uh, but uh, the person, or a person, uh, that I think people should be depending on to help them out through turbulent times is a fee-only financial planner. So today we're going to t be talking about what is the role of a fee-only financial planner. Craig, thanks for joining me and being Mike, my guest I'm real, today. Mike, I'm real proud to be here. You, you have created a real legacy of recordings of some of the best minds in the financial industry in our community. Yeah. So congratulations on what you're doing. I'm real proud to have been a part of this list. And thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm proud to have you as part of my list. Good. All right. So let's get on with our first question. Craig, what is the difference between a fee-only financial planner as compared to a stockbroker or a fee-based investment advisor? Well, since I've done both, maybe nothing. <laughs> I'm the same today that I was, oh. but um, uh, what I can do as a fee-only financial advisor versus a broker is a lot more than I could as a, as a sales commission sales-oriented broker. So, so the fee-only financial planner is about advice and counsel. Mm -hmm. Everyone in our firm has a master's degree. We, our, our business is education, it's not selling a product. Mm -hmm. In contrast to the brokerage world, you would, you would think Merrill Lynch, uh, Dean Witter, um, Edward Jones, those kinds of organizations, they sell a product. The, the person who works at that firm, the salesperson who works at that firm, sells a product and earns a commission. Mm -hmm. Now there are several kinds of licenses to be able to work in this business. The license to sell a commissionable security is called a Series 7 issued by the FINRA, Financial Industry um, uh, Regulatory um, Agency. Agency. And, and FINRA's number 7 license says that, that the salesman can sell a security and earn a commission for it. To be able to sell that security, they only have to, quote, know their client, mm -hmm. which means name and address and date of birth, maybe. Mm -hmm. In contrast to being fee only, I gave up my Series 7 license 20 years ago. I can no longer receive a commission from the sale of a security. Mm -hmm. I now have what's called a 65 license from FINRA. That 65 license says that I can charge a fee, but I cannot receive a commission. Mm -hmm. so, so we charge a fee for the amount of work that we do or the amount of assets under management. We basically work for the client. We don't work for the brokerage organization selling products. So there's not somebody uh, that's your manager. Of course, you're in charge of your own firms. I'm being a little facetious, but it's basically saying, get on the horn and call your clients and tell them about this particular new offering or what have you. That's pretty pretty standard in the <laughs> securities sales business. Okay. Yeah. In contrast to our business, which is talking to clients, I, 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 I'm proud of the fact that I'm able to talk to my clients and give them advice and counsel when they call. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to sell a product to justify my time with them. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's true. Eventually, in the sales business, the salesman person has to sell a product to justify the time they spend with their customers. Okay. 
maybe um, in this area you can talk a little bit about fiduciary standards and how does that relate to this whole yeah game. fiduciary is was set up under the 1940 act so so to earn a, a FINRA number seven license you're under what's called the 1933 act mm -hmm. uh, after the depression they created several acts which cleaned up the securities business mm -hmm. uh, and put regulations into the securities business and uh, that act was passed in 1933 um, what they quickly discovered was that qualified plans, pension plans particularly, needed a fiduciary managing the money, not a salesman. So they created in the 19, in 1940, they passed the act um, that allowed someone to get a Series 65 license like I have mm -hmm. and, and be a fiduciary for that pension plan. Fiduciary means that they're making the best choices for, for, for the benefit of the plan rather than to sell a product. And uh, that relationship means that they are transparent, they need to identify all their conflicts of interest, they never receive a commission, um, they, don't, they, they don't have a vested interest to sell any one product, mm -hmm. and they have to have a fiduciary responsibility to their, to their clients, um, which is different than know your customer standard that the salesperson works under. It's much more in-depth, much, much higher standard for a fiduciary than for a salesman. The so fiduciary sort of means like acting almost on behalf of somebody. Good. So yes, a legal term would mean, yes, I'm, I'm acting on behalf of my clients. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for that. I can be held to that mm -hmm. level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting that uh, right at the moment, we're in uh, September 2011 when this show is taped, and Congress um, in, in January gave the regulatory agency called the Securities and Exchange Commission mm -hmm. a mandate that they pass, that they create 120 different laws. That's a lot, um, <laughs> that's a lot of laws. And, uh, they passed it, because they couldn't do it themselves, they passed that, that mandate on to the SEC, who is a regulatory agency. That we don't vote in people at the, at the SEC. Um, it, uh, as an American, I, I think that ought to be illegal, but I'm just one vote. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, the SEC is researching how to pass, how to create the regulation that they need one of the regulations that they're researching is this fiduciary responsibility. Yes. Uh, the, the, the new law, uh, as mandated from the President Obama, is that they want everyone who gives advice and counsel on financial issues to have a fiduciary responsibility for that client. And uh, um, I, I think that's a wonderful goal, but the question is, how do, we, how do we impose fiduciary responsibility on a salesperson? Mm -hmm. when, when I was selling product 25, 35 years ago, it, it was not prudent for me to have fiduciary, I wanted to sell a product. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't sell the product if I had to disclose all my conflicts of interest and, and find the best product for the client, because the one I was selling may not have been the best, best product. Uh, I would have had to to disclose all of my commissions. I certainly didn't want to do that with a lot of my customers. Um, and I would have had to, t to find the best product for my clients and that, that, that didn't fit my sales mentality. So I have nothing against sales. I think the salespeople should be able to sell product anytime they can do that. But, but it, is, it, it is inappropriate if not, if not, if not a bad decision to try and impose fiduciary responsibilities on a salesman. Now, I am mandated by the 40 Act, 1940 Act, as a registered investment advisor to have fiduciary responsibility for my clients. I chose that relationship. Mm -hmm. Clients choose that when they hire me. Uh, we work for the client. We, remember, we don't work for the big corporations. So, so I want that fiduciary responsibility and I want it as broad and as responsibly as it is right now. 
the risk we suffer as Americans um, is that the SEC will wash down, water down the requirements for fiduciary to something that's closer to the sales, current sales environment, which is simply know your client. Um, so so um, if the SEC waters down fiduciary, that means the, the investing public no longer has access to a fiduciary relationship. They've got something that's been so watered down that it doesn't mean anything. They can't trust the advice and counsel they're getting anymore because that person's not under today's fiduciary standards. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's kind of a confusing time and we just have to see yes. how they're going to reconcile because again, they're functioning, um, these people, the brokers, uh, in a little different environment or a considerably different environment from, from different. the uh, asset manager uh, f fiduciary yeah. Uh, as you are. Okay. Now, aren't there like a range of commissions for different products? And doesn't that range create something? In other words, some, of, some commissions are higher as a percentage of what you pay than others. And doesn't that create a little bit of a conflict of interest for the uh, salesperson who's offering those products? Yeah, to, to the so, mm -hmm. so um, the, the example is that if a salesman has a choice between two products to sell, the one with an 8% commission is going to probably get sold more times than the one with the 4% commission would. You think, yeah. It, it might be that the 4% commission product is a better product than the 8% commission product, but the salesman's selling, making reasonable choices for himself and the company he works for she works for uh, to sell the higher commission product. Mm -hmm. um, the investing public suffers from that choice and without a fiduciary responsibility, the investing public has to, has to research what's being sold. They have to perform their own research so that they know whether the salesperson is selling them the 8% commission product which might not be as good as the 4% commission product. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting to note that 20 plus years ago, I started using a, a family of mutual funds called Dimensional Fund Advisors, and I performed research on them, and it just they did things entirely different. The, the, they, were, they were a mutual fund designed around the practical application of the didactic research out of the University of Chicago. Um, that school is now called Chicago Booth School mm -hmm. of Business. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, we, we started using those mutual, that mutual fund family in 1989. All of my clients have that portfolio. Uh, it turns out that that portfolio has, has outperformed the stock market and done it with less risk than the stock market, so our performance is in the top 1% of all money managers. That's significant. My story, though, is that the mutual fund, um, the family of mutual funds called DFA, mm -hmm would not allow Merrill Lynch, Dean Witter, the brokers, salespeople to sell that mutual fund. You had to be a fee-only advisor and you had to go to their class and pass it. At the end, they'd give you a test. And if you didn't pass their test, you couldn't sell their mutual funds or represent their mutual funds to your clients. Mm -hmm. So, so um, um, that mutual fund family this year in June, became the sixth largest mutual fund family in the world mm -hmm. from, from a minuscule unknown family name, family of mutual funds to now the sixth largest. So the largest is Vanguard and Fidelity. I don't know, mm -hmm. one or two, one, two yeah. or one, and, and then three more, and then DFA. Mm -hmm. And they were a nobody 20 years, absolutely nobody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and only 1,200 fee-only advisors like myself can, can get access and, and use those mutual funds for their clients. So just a small cadre of, of financial advisors have grown this mutual fund family to the sixth largest in the world. Well, for other mutual fund families to compete with DFA, they are increasing their commission payable to the salesman. Hmm. 